What is up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Tattoo Critiques with your host Pony Lawson. We're going to be going through a few artist tattoos today and make sure to stick around to the very end of the video where we talk about my favorite tattoo of the episode and a featured artist who I think you guys should be following. So sit back, hold tight and let's roll that intro music. Okay, so the first tattoo sent in is from Breck Kirking from Wisconsin. And wouldn't you know, you also sent in a Mac Miller, which is perfectly fine with me because I love Mac. He's one of my favorite artists and I don't mind uh, talking about tattoos and breaking things down. And I think people generally put a lot of love into Mac tattoos because they love them a lot as well. So usually they're, they're pretty good pieces to look at. Okay, so initially when I first opened this image, uh, my eyes went to two places. The first place was the face and the head and I really like how everything looks there, but unfortunately when it comes down to the sweater, I am just not as impressed with the sweater as I am with the face. It kind of seems like you maybe whip through the sweater a little bit to get to that face and that's where he spent most of the time. And to be honest, it kind of looks like his arms are in a straight jacket. And I think that's just because of like the shoulders kind of come down at an angle too much. Uh, and I know that could be because it's wrapping a little bit, but that might have been something to consider when doing this. Maybe just bring his shoulders out a little bit more. I know you kind of cut them short a little bit or cut them even shorter than where they are now. You know, it, it kind of feels like you went halfway between there and just didn't work out as well as it should have. Again, I don't know if it's exactly because of this wraps or you had trouble with the stencil or something like that, but it seems like his right shoulder kind of just has a little lump or goes up a little higher than it should. That being the case, I feel like it would have been wise to maybe take a skin marker or something along those lines and just soften that shoulder a bit, you know, kind of bring it down a little bit. Because sometimes when we put stencils on the body, especially around the edges, they like to lift up. You know, when they come around the edges of an arm or a leg, things just tend to lift that way because that's how the paper rolls. But if you were to take a marker or something along those lines, just soften it out, and I think this uh, would have helped that shoulder look a lot more realistic and a little bit more pleasing to the eye. An alternative could have also been to cut those shoulders short and just kind of give him a bust. You know, just remove the arms altogether and then just kind of leave it, uh, you know, maybe a little bit below the collar or something like that. It, it, it does fill the space nice, you know, having his whole entire shirt in there. I just wish he would have done a little bit more with that shirt. Okay, let's talk about that face because the face is pretty cool, but there are a couple spots that I want to bring up. One of them being the transition from your teeth to the gums. It just kind of feels like it's not that strong. Um, like there could have been more of a gray wash outline or a little bit more shade. Something to just differentiate the gums from the teeth because right now they're kind of running into each other. The bottom of the nose seems to get a little pointy as well. I feel like that could have been rounded off just a little bit more. I'm just not sure if maybe you're kind of flying through some parts quicker than others, but um, I can tell you know what you're doing because I see those parts in the tattoo that are done well. It's a little strange because when I see the shades in the background next to his face, they're very, very, very smooth. And then when I look at the shades in the sweater, they're not as smooth or maybe there's some blood or something like that on there. I'm not sure, but it just looks patchier than the shades that's behind his head. Uh, and also his face as well. There are some very soft shades in his forehead and his eyes look very real and his hair looks very soft but we kind of lose that around the mouth and chin. Like I said, the eyes are done very well and the eyebrows look very soft and almost hair-like. Uh, it's almost believable that that's hair. And again, the hair up top too is, uh, you have just the right amount of skin tone in there and stuff like that to make it feel like hair. You know, you could probably could have put a little bit more texture in there, but it does look like real hair, unlike some of the other Macs we've seen in the past. The tattoo on his neck looks pretty good. It's not super sharp and that's okay because we don't want to bring attention to that tattoo. We just want it to kind of be part of the background. So I think you did a good job with that. One more thing, the shadow that's underneath Mac's head that's going on to his neck and shirt as well doesn't really look that believable. If that were a real shadow, you would have uh, the darkest parts of that shadow be the shirt line um, and the fold of the shirt collar as well. And then you'd have a little bit lighter on the actual shirt, but this just seems to be all one shade, making it look very blocky and not realistic. So overall, I feel like I would have just nixed that shirt altogether. Um, and if I would have kept that shirt in, I would have kept those shoulders in as well. It's either all or nothing, okay? Secondly, the shadow, uh, a few more tones in the shadow would have helped make that a little bit more believable. But you do know what you're doing with the machine. And I can tell that by looking at the shades in the back and Max overall face is very believable. It looks realistic and it is a very well done tattoo. So thank you very much, Breck, for sending that in. I appreciate it. Okay, so the next tattoo is sent in by Igor from Russia. And Igor, you sent in this uh, Jeremy is painting reference of this astronaut and a little bit of geometrical work in the background. I only know that's a Jeremy is painting reference because I follow him on Instagram, uh, as you should. Uh, he makes a lot of terrific art and things like that and a lot of great references that people borrow to 
tattoo from sometimes. And since I know this reference, I know that he's kind of missing the exploded uh, visor out of the astronaut mask, which I'm kind of bummed not to see, but we'll get there in a second. The tattoo itself is done uh, very well, but I just would have loved to see that shattered glass in the helmet. I'm gonna kind of start at the bottom and work my way up. When I look down at the bottom near his boots, uh, I kind of feel like you should have used a little bit more of a liner in that area. I can tell you used a little bit of a liner, but it's just not that strong, especially on the left side of his pant leg. Uh, it just seems to get a little soft. It, if it were a little bit more strong, kind of like how you have on the top part of the astronaut, I feel like it would have read a little bit better and it would have made the leg stand off the skin just a hair more. As we work our way up to the shadows of the pant legs and things like that, they're really not bad. Um, I just wish they would have uh, had a little bit more work to it, a little bit more uh, realism and finesse there. Same thing on the right side of the pant leg. Uh, you've got the shadows right where they need to be and the highlights right where they need to be, but I feel like you're kind of just missing a little bit of that um, mid-shadowing, that mid-tone as we work our way up and get into the geometrical uh, aspect of it and his body and helmet. Um, I'm, I'm becoming happier as, uh, as I break this down because things are becoming a little bit more clean. I feel like the, the arm and the helmet outline and everything like that and the shades and shadows are, again, all where they need to be. These just uh, feel a little bit more realistic than the bottom part of it. And when we get into the geometrical part behind him, uh, again, you've, you've got a lot of good symmetry going on. There are a few parts that aren't exactly symmetrical, but for the most part, you've done a good job at executing that. So if I didn't know this reference, I probably would have thought that he was wearing like a space mitten of some sort. But since I do have the reference with me, I noticed that you only gave him uh, a mitten and not really fingered gloves. I can tell that you kind of... Uh, like it maybe missed one of those fingers on the glove because they are supposed to be all four fingers on there and a thumb. But maybe the reference kind of just got too dark on you or something like that and maybe you didn't see that line in there. I do like the little highlight that you have on the helmet, how you've got the little stippling in the right place to show uh, the light coming from the top and the side. You've got a little bit of shadow that's running through the helmet. It's very cool. So overall, I do like this tattoo right off the bat. There are just a few small things I would work on just to help make this thing uh, a little bit closer to perfect. That being some extra mid-tone shadows in the legs and maybe a little bit more symmetry up in the geometrical portion of the tattoo. But other than that, solid work. So thank you, Igor, for sending that in. So next up, we've got Manny Gonzalez. And Manny, you sent in this little skull tattoo. You said it was your first tattoo and you'd like some pointers to kind of help you grow. So let's get right into it. So it's not the greatest tattoo, but that's okay, it is your first. So it's very hard to see where you're at with your work because uh, with a tattoo like this, everything just looks the same. You only have uh, you know one kind of shade running through this entire tattoo, uh, maybe a few lines here and there, but everything is pretty much the same. You've got the same uh, black short shade throughout the entire tattoo a few small lines here and there, nothing extravagant. But again, I know you're kind of just practicing on skin and trying to get the feel of the machine. But maybe some things to help you grow. I'd say maybe focus more on your designs because this design is not going to help you whatsoever. I know it might be a small design, stick with that, but work on things that are maybe a little bit more complete, like roses, maybe a smaller complete skull, you know, with the entire outline of the head and teeth, etc. Not something that's just kind of floating out in the middle of nowhere, because something like that takes a little bit of finesse to look good. I would probably practice uh, different techniques with your hand movements. Right now, it kind of just feels like you're shading away from your lines, like you're just pushing the needle away from your line. There are actually several techniques you can do with your hand movement to achieve different looks on skin. And one of them is the pendulum movement which a lot of uh, more experienced skilled tattooers use, and that's just essentially using and moving your needle like a pendulum in a clock, where you're sweeping it back and forth. Not so much pushing it in one direction, but giving it a nice, even, consistent shade all the way through. Again, I would kind of focus on things maybe with more lines right now than shading, because you want to focus on line weight, you know, small lines, thicker lines, and things like that. You really want to hone your line skills before you start shading, because lines, after all, are the foundation of a very solid tattoo. If you have shaky lines, you're gonna have a shaky tattoo, guaranteed. Make sure that you're focusing on your lines. You want to make sure that those lines are as good as you can possibly get them before you start venturing into shading and color. So keep it up, Manny. Make sure you send me some work further down the line. I'd like to see how you progress. And next up, we've got Rain Spillers. Rain, you mentioned you're nearing the end of your apprenticeship. You've been tattooing for about a year now. So let's see what we've got. The first tattoo you sent in was this traditional style skull with a little cowboy hat and some glasses and a couple gold teeth. Very cool design overall. Let's break this down. Okay, initially, I do love the design of this tattoo. However, one thing catches my eye, and that's the way that the band runs around the cowboy hat and the line runs on top of the glasses. Those two lines running parallel together make it seem like that's the band of the hat and it kind of just 
makes it feel a little bit goofy from the glasses all the way up into the band. It's not that big of a deal, but when you're creating parallel lines and intersecting lines, it just creates too much of a distraction. So instead of my eyes getting drawn to the cooler parts of the tattoo, my eyes kind of get sucked to the not so important parts of the tattoo. Okay, let's get to the meat of it. The outlines that you have on this thing are pretty effing solid, better than a lot of the outlines I see on this show. That being said, your outlines aren't perfect, but I do enjoy your heavier weight outlines. When it comes to your smaller weight outlines, they're not as nice, but like the line around the glasses and the cowboy hat and brim are very nice and smooth, as they should be on a traditional or neo-traditional tattoo. So if we come down to the black chip in the cavity of the eye on his left eye, the black chip that's shining through the glare. I feel like we shouldn't be able to see that chip so much since we are looking through a glare. That chip should almost be invisible. The other chips above that glare should be nice and dark because you can see right through the clear part of the glasses. But when we hit that glare, everything kind of needs to be toned down a little bit. So maybe use 50% uh, of the black that you were using or 20% of the black you were using. Something that shows a clear distinction that it's sitting behind that glare. Because right now it's just not allowing that glare to work the way it should. I like the way that you added a couple little dots through this tattoo as well to show some texture. However, I wish you would have added just a little bit smaller dots, uh, maybe a little bit more, and in the places that they're supposed to be. They kind of look like they were placed in randomly, above the nose, below that nose in a little part, and just in random spots in the eye. Also so again in that glare part where there shouldn't be any. I would have used uh, maybe a three liner or something like that and just really put a lot of rough texture in where the teeth meet, you know, maybe inside the nostril, inside the eye cavity, away from the glare, but parts that you really want to want it to feel gritty and dark and things like that. Nice touch with the gold teeth, pretty cool. Uh, I maybe would have added a little bit of brown in there instead of that black shading just to make it feel a little bit more like real gold, but cool nonetheless. The next tattoo you sent in is also this little traditional tattoo of a rose, and it's nice to see an apprentice doing traditional tattoos. Boy, is it rare that we see that. A lot of apprentices like to bite off more than they can chew, and they start attacking things like, um, you know, full back pieces or portraits when they really shouldn't be doing that for maybe a couple years, you know, and, and, until they're comfortable with it, or at least have a solid design down. But back to your flower. This thing, I think, needs a little more TLC than the skull. Right off the bat, it looks great when you look at it initially, but again, when we break things down, traditional tattoos are very easy to see the discrepancies because everything is very symmetrical. So the inside of the flower, the bottom left of the circular part, you've got these little petals kind of hanging out. Those little petals aren't exactly symmetrical, and again, those things need to be symmetrical as possible. Otherwise, we're gonna see those small flaws. I'm not a huge fan of the leaves on the outside. They kind of just feel a little too bubbly. You can still have those same like round shapes in there, but straighten them out a little bit because right now they just feel like cartoon leaves, and I'm sure that's not what you were going for. The little vine in the bottom left leaf Obviously, that's not very straight, could be straightened up a bit, you know, like the other three around it. The lines themselves aren't that great on this one, not as nice as what you had on the skull. I'm assuming you probably did this one before the skull, uh, because the skull's outlines are pretty solid, whereas this one, they just feel a little more shaky than what you had on the skull. But the shading in the petals themselves are consistent throughout. So Rain, I think you're right where you need to be in your apprenticeship. I think you're doing all the right tattoos that you need to be doing, uh, and I think it's probably about time for you to start exploring maybe into a little bit bigger tattoos. But again, overall, you've got some solid lines. Maybe just focus on your design work uh, and making sure you've got a very solid design ahead of time uh, before you actually place the tattoo down, and maybe focus more on the finer details and getting rid of those distractions. So thank you very much rain for sending those in. Next up, we've got Jonathan Monty. And Jonathan, you mentioned you're at about eight months into your apprenticeship when you sent these in. You sent in a handful of tattoos, but there are a couple in specific that I'd like to get into. The first one being this colored butterfly, uh, this traditional colored butterfly, which again, I'm happy to see traditional work coming from an apprentice. This isn't a bad tattoo by any means. There are just a couple things that I would have liked to see done differently. And the first one is having a couple different line weights in here. You know, maybe have that exterior outline uh, be even thicker, maybe like a 14 liner or something like that, something that's just bold and in your face. That way you can bring in some smaller line work for the inside of the feathers as well, and the inside of the body and the antennas. You know, that way you've got a little bit of variation going on. Having done that, it would have made it feel like you have more control of your line work, having those daintier, smaller, thinner lines on the inside and a bolder outline on the outside. There are a couple holidays or parts left untattooed in the colored parts of the butterfly, like when you look up into the antenna, the yellow part, it just doesn't seem to be all the way filled in. So when that heals, you're gonna see a little bit of skin tone in there. Same goes for the red throughout the tattoo as well. There are just a couple pieces of skin showing through. You know, if you take a little bit more time, make sure you fill in wall to wall or line 
line to line and get all those spots filled in. Another interesting thing that I've noticed about your tattoos, I can see the texture of your needle running through this entire thing. Uh, so it's, it's pretty fascinating. A lot of times you can't tell exactly which way the tattooer is shading, but I can see the rake marks from your needle. And not that that's a bad thing at all. I think that's just a very unique uh, thing that you have for your work. When I look at the green, when I look at the blacks, and I look at the reds, I can tell exactly which way you are holding your needle throughout this entire thing. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just something interesting I wanted to point out. But since I can see your rake marks, that does mean that they aren't entirely filled in, like the black on the very bottom. This should be solid black from outline all the way up to the other outline that's leading next to the skin and the green. That should look like a sticker. And the same goes for the green and the red as well, but I feel like, uh, you know, when it comes to the black, that's what you want to make look solid and bold. Even when I look in the yellows and things, I can see your needle marks and the rake marks. I can see that you went in a circle on the left part of this butterfly in that yellow area. I'm not sure exactly how it will heal up, if those rake marks will still be in there or not, or if those will flatten out, but maybe you want to try some different techniques as well. I don't know if your mentor has showed you like a circle technique or a pendulum technique or anything like that, or if you're just pushing your ink all the way through these tattoos. It doesn't even look like you're necessarily brushing it, but just kind of pushing your needle throughout the entire thing. Which again, it's just unique and it's your own style. Let's move on to the next tattoo you sent in, which is this little, fairly simple plague doctor. This one I feel like needs a little bit more TLC than the butterfly. You know, line weights, uh, control of shade, and things like that. I feel like you're probably a little bit more proud of the butterfly, maybe not as proud as this one, but you sent this in, so this is what we're gonna talk about. Again, you could probably introduce a 14 round liner or something that's a bit heavier around the entire outline of this tattoo and use a small smaller liner for the inside, uh, you know, for the stitching and the eyes and all the little lines that run through this, it probably would have been a little bit nicer had you used like a five liner or something like that. The shades in this one seem a little bit more haphazard and not as controlled as the butterfly. And obviously we can tell that because we see the needle marks and the rake marks, I can tell exactly where you moved your needle. If we look up into the hat, if we look on the right side of the hat, I can see three or four pushes that you made with your machine. One, two, three, four, they're all right there. And you maybe darkened in the other uh, part of the hat as well. But uh, again, to me, this part of the tattoo, or this tattoo in general, just doesn't seem like you have as much control as the previous one. Speaking of the hat, I'm not sure why it's squared off like that, to be honest. You've got a round brim and a very square-like hat on top. I'm not sure what's going on there. Most of the time, these hats are usually uh, generally very cylindrical and round, maybe with a squared off top. But uh, yeah, this, the shape of the hat is just throwing me off. To reiterate, I feel like your butterfly is a lot more stronger tattoo than this Plague Doctor, and I, I'm assuming that you did the butterfly after this one, maybe you've learned a bit more. If not, then you just maybe need to control your needle a little bit more when it comes to the direction of shading. You know, you need to move your needle in the way that you're trying to shade. So if something is round and cylindrical, you need to move the needle in that same direction. You can't make something cylindrical by moving it with flat shades. It just doesn't happen that way. Again, maybe adding some thicker outlines around the edge and cleaning up those smaller lines and making sure they are as clean as possible. So thank you, Jonathan, very much for sending that in. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for the critiques this week. But before we go, I wanna talk about my favorite tattoo of the episode, which was sent in by Igor from Russia. Igor, I decided to go with yours because it was the cleanest of the group this week. And for the most part, this is a very, very solid tattoo overall. I really like your style. Uh, when I look at your other tattoos, I really like what you have going on. And there were a couple things that you could have worked on, but overall, this tattoo is badass. So congratulations, Igor, on being this week's winner of the Tattoo Critiques. And one last thing before we go, I wanna make sure to share with you my feature artist of the week, which is Tattoos by Landon from Denver, Colorado. Uh, I've been following Landon for a few years now. I've met him a handful of times and Landon is a gentleman. His tattoos are extraordinary and probably some of the best line work and line weight I've seen in tattoos probably ever. Almost every single thing he tattoos, he makes up himself out of his own crazy brain. Uh, the dude is amazing, so please make sure you head over to his Instagram page, give him a follow, let him know I sent you, and if you're in Colorado, stop by his shop and get some work. So thanks for sticking around, everybody. Don't forget, if you want to send in your tattoos, you can send them into ponycritiques at gmail.com, and hopefully we'll see them on a future episode. Make sure you share this video with your friends. More importantly, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when we go live. I'll see you all next week. Hey guys, we've now got a members only section where you can see the videos a few days early. If you just head on over to youtube.com slash ponylawson slash join, or just visit my YouTube channel from a desktop and just hit that join button and watch these videos a few days early. See y'all next time.